guys, so today I'm going to be doing a video on how to shield uh, my Strats body uh, for the Parts Caster project build. Uh, I'm going to be using copper shielding tape, which uh, we sell on the website, uh, sorry for the shameless promotion here, in 10 foot lengths, it's 50mm wide, so 3 meters or so, and it's uh, more than enough to do two 2 plus guitars. Uh, the first thing to note is you don't have to use copper tape. I'm only using it because it's what I've got at hand. Got to hand, excuse me. Uh, you can use aluminium foil. It works just as well, uh, and it's cheaper. And you can also use the shielding paint, which you can get from various sources. But the paint is actually very expensive, and it does require quite a few layers to generate full conductivity. So, a little bit about the, the theory behind it. Um, all electronic devices and components are vulnerable to EMI which is short for electromagnetic interference. Uh, so sometimes uh, when you're playing live in front of big stage lights and got big speakers and amplifiers on the stage, it will all uh, start humming and giving unwanted feedback coming from your guitar. That's because the components inside uh, are picking up feedback and it's obviously been amplified and it's, uh, some people like it, most people don't. Um, a little, if you're a bedroom player like myself, uh, about 15 years ago, uh, if you had your mobile phone anywhere near your amplifier, you would hear it ticking every time a phone call or a message came in. Uh, t t technology has advanced since then, it doesn't quite happen with an iPhone or a Samsung, a smartphone, let's just say. Um, and obviously, for me and this, this house that I'm currently living in, uh, it doesn't matter what guitar I use, shielding, uh, I have to shield my guitars because if I walk, start to walk towards my amplifier, especially when it's on high gain, uh, the feedback just goes ballistic. So, anyway, the theory behind it is uh, you need to make a Faraday cage to protect, to shield the components from external unwanted electromagnetic interference. So we're going to do that by using, uh, like I say, you can use aluminium or copper, whatever. I'm going to be using copper. I'm going to layer all the control cavities all the way around pick up cavities, uh, the, jacks, the jack cavity, I'm going to layer all of those with uh, copper tape and then I'm, I'm cheating a bit, the idea is that your pit guard also has uh, the copper on or a shield of some sort, so I'm using one of these, it's one of those uh, vintage style strat shielding plates, it's a very very thin sheet of aluminium, very very handy, so apologies I am cheating major style but the idea being, if you haven't got one of these, you can just use copper tape. Uh, but these weren't too expensive, they're about 10 quid off eBay. So the idea being, when all your components are inside and they're protected underneath from the copper tape, when you put your pit guard in place, that's also got shielding on the underside, the shielding from the pit guard comes into contact with the shielding in the cavities, and that creates a complete, fully conductive Faraday cage surrounding the components inside. And that cage is what protects it from the elect the unwanted interference. Okay, so without too much chit chat. Oh, the other thing to note is you don't have to shield your guitar. If it's not broke, don't try and fix it. But for a lot of people, it's uh, unfortunately needs to be done. So I'm using a uh, 50 millimeter wire tape, a uh, pair of scissors, obviously, and I've got a multimeter here to check for continuity, which we'll do throughout, just to make sure everything's working as expected. So, uh, if you cut your tape into strips, and you want to lay it on the, the, the surface of the body there like I have, you're talking two millimetres that have gone over. And just make sure you really push the copper tape up against the, the body surface. Okay, so this overhang here is very important. I'm going to do that all the way around. Uh, so I'm just going to get another strip. So I'm going to do exactly the same. Put a tiny overhang on.
Okay, so yeah, the other thing I should have said, uh, if you're using copper tape or aluminium tape, you need to make sure that the adhesive on the underside of the tape is conductive. Uh, obviously that's important for your constant continuity. So, once you've laid down your first two strips, take your multimeter, set it to the continuity setting, which is this one here where my thumb is. And just check for continuity between the two strips that you've just put on. And that beep tells me there is full continuity between the two. Right, so if you're using tape that you bought from Six String Supplies, uh, you won't have to do the continuity test, it is fully conductive. If you buy tape elsewhere, and it's, you know, it's, it, I'm not saying don't use everyone else's, go whatever you fancy, sometimes the adhesive isn't conductive. So once you put down two strips, check for continuity. If you don't have it, you, you'd have to put a blob, on, a blob of solder just across the seam here to, to ensure continuity between, conductivity between the two strips. Okay, so I'm going to go around now doing the whole, all of these cavities, I'm going to cut it into strips, little different shapes and sizes, ensuring I've got the overhang all the way, um, all the way around, excuse me, all around the pickups. Uh, I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing because it's, it, it is very boring, so I'll do a little time lapse, time lapse of that, and when it's all done, we'll do a, a, a quick continuity test just to make sure everything's there, and then we'll see what happens after that. <laughs> So I've finished uh, putting all the copper tape, uh, completely covering all the cavities, the jack, uh, the jack cavity, the main controls and the three pickups. It's a completely sealed, there's no gaps or holes anywhere, apart from obviously the holes. Um, so I've just covered the hole and then pierced through it to reconnect the jack cavity to the main controls. And this hole here is where we're going to have the, the ground wire coming from the bridge. However, it doesn't matter if it's a Strat or a Les Paul. Or whatever the guitar is, if you've got two cavities like this that are not connected, so two different cavities, you obviously need to connect them to ensure continuity, conductivity uh, throughout the guitar. So to do that, I'm going to use uh, a little jumper wire, tin copper. I'm just going to very simply feed it through the hole. Just like that, I'm going to solder it in place, just turn that around so you get a better view. Okay, so here's the wire, I'm just going to solder that down. So that's nicely soldered, and then I'm just going to cover that blob of solder up with some copper tape. And then we're going to do exactly the same from the other side. Beautiful. So I'm going to turn this around again so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. So here's the ground wire coming from the jack cavity. I'm just going to solder that in place. Then 
this is the main advantage of using copper actually, it's a lot easier to solder. Uh, if you're using aluminium, uh, it, it is solderable but it does take a bit more heat. There we go, exactly the same again, just use a little square of copper tape just to hold it in place and cover it all. I mean it doesn't need holding in place at all. You don't even actually need to put a copper tape on top of it. But I am, just for the sake of it. Okay, I'll zoom out again. So that's how you connect both of the, the cavities together. Now we're just going to check for continuity throughout. I'm also going to start thinking about our Faraday cage. Okay, so take your multimeter, set it to the continuity setting and just test between points throughout that you've got continuity. So there I can see that it's fully connected uh, from the jack cavity, which means the jumper has worked beautifully. Okay. Uh, so to complete your Faraday cage, the cage itself anyway, uh, this is the underside of my pit guard. So this is the aluminium shielding plate that shows at the very beginning. It's very thin and it's going to sit underneath the pit guard. So when that comes into contact, when it's all screwed down and everything's loaded in it, and you um, it comes into contact with the tape below, that's what effectively it's the cover of the Faraday cage. So I'm just going to connect test them both and that's all beautifully connected and that as well so that's how you create the Faraday cage however uh, your Faraday cage is completely useless unless it's grounded so we're just going to show you how to ground it to your main pit guard okay so I've put in the ground wire here which is coming from the trend claw on the back uh, so basically even though I haven't got the bridge in place when this is grounded here and it's connected to the springs the bridge, the steel, uh, the tram system, and therefore the strings, uh, which we as the player touch, that's part of the ground circuit. So this, uh, you'll see on a lot of diagrams, bridge from the ground or bridge from the tremolo. This is the bridge from the tremolo and the strap. So there's a little hook on the claw just there. But anyway, I'll turn it over. So this is what we're going to ground to the electronics, the main circuit. Uh, normally on the volume pots, uh, just because it's nearer. So I'm just going to turn that back on. And once that's done, we then have to ground the, the shielding, the Faraday cage, to the main circuit to complete the Faraday cage. Uh, like I say, if it's not grounded, it is essentially useless and just a pretty bit of copper. So it looks nice, but doesn't do anything. So just going to solder the main ground from the bridge. Okay. And then like I say, we need to create another ground, we need to ground the shielding to the, the main control, so I'm also going to run another ground wire from the, the side here of the, the shielding, the cage, to the top of the volume pot, just to where I put that one. So I'm just going to get them my pliers, cut the wire a little bit short because it's too long. Just going to move that out of the way. I'm essentially doing exactly the same thing, so I'm going to solder this to the side of the cage, just like Probably around there. I'm just going to tape it to keep it in place because it's at a funny angle. So I'm just going to tape that for two seconds. I don't want to leave the tape on too long because it's probably going to attack the nitro finish. Okay. 
So I'm just going to solder this in place, the, um, the second ground wire. Beautiful, and then the same again. Just remove that. I'm just going to cover it up with a, a slither of copper tape because I don't want too much. Just a small square just to cover the joint. I say small, you want it large enough to fully cover it all. Now, whilst I'm blabbing on about this, this isn't actually necessary to add a second jumper wire there is a risk extremely small risk uh, of a ground loop um because essentially once you've connected this ground wire here to the volume pot everything becomes grounded including the shielding plate and then when that comes back into contact with the copper when it's screwed down uh it grounds it anyway but just in case you're not shielding the pit guard properly or for whatever reason you, you might as well put in a second ground wire and I'm just going to pop that onto the pot just like the other one and I'm just going to tin this quickly sorted I'm just going to pop that next to the other one Right, that's, so that's all done. I'm just going to check that the shielding is indeed grounded. Beautiful. So everything there is completely connected. Obviously when that's all been screwed back down, you have a perfect Faraday cage. So thanks very much for watching. That is how you shield a strat. Um, like I say, if you have a bit of noise or feedback, um, it is particularly... Guitars with single coils are particularly vulnerable. Uh, any questions or comments, please leave a message or comment or whatever, get in touch, and we'll see you next time.